What's going on? <clears throat> was going to do a live. I might do another one on that topic I was trying to do. <clears throat> Probably by the end of the week. Um, I see that the roads are clear once again. I guess that variant got people nervous again. Then it'll be a rinse and a repeat. The next variant will do the same thing. It's very disruptive <clears throat> for a lot of people. Really want to talk about black conservatives, but disguised as pro blacks and street thugs. But I'm going to detour just a little bit because I was reading the article. It's about something, a cult, a minority. I, matter of fact, I, I noticed that it's funny. <laughs> they called him a cult owner. I think he owned 10% of the Golden State Warriors. But they didn't call him, call him a minority owner. And reading that article made me want to bring this up. The guys, the East... Well, he's a Sri Lankan. Might as well say East Indian. <clears throat> Dark. Made a lot of investments, so he got a lot of money. But see, if that had been a black American, they would have called him a minority owner. See, that's what they do in the media. But instead, they gave him respect, calling him a co-owner. If you only own 10%, you're not a co-owner. You're a minority owner. But since he's East Indian, they want to designate him with the title of minority. That's how the small hat media operates. They don't harass others like they harass us. That's why I keep telling people it's not about color. It's about your heritage. Because if it was about color, why are these East Indians always fucking rich? Owning Popeyes or parts of it, a great part of it, distribution parts, Dunkin' Donuts, all these fucking motels, all these other groups are not wanting for a damn thing. That's why you don't hear them crying about racism all the goddamn time. Because there is none for them. Doesn't matter what your color is, doesn't matter what your nationality is. You could be from a fucking country that supposedly attacked the United States. And I said this before in other videos, and you can come here and live it up. But black Americans never attack anybody. But we're the only ones getting held back. And I told you who's holding us back long before Tariq Nasheed even thought about talking about this as he got it from me. And I'm not bullshitting when I say that. I told, I examined the facts, and the facts are it's the Caribbeans, and now I'm blanketing that and expanding that to all, and I do mean all, red, black, and green types, Pan-African types, all of them, but they all got their stuff from the Caribbean, because they came here brainwashing with that Marcus Garvey bullshit. And a lot of these guys, you notice that most of these Pan-Africans, you notice that when you dig deeper, there's always a Caribbean connection with them, whether it's their own heritage or who they married or something like that. So that compromises your own people for somebody else's. Now you're acting as an agent for the Caribbean. And the Caribbean is acting as an agent for white supremacy. So that means that the red, black, and green, they're agents of white supremacy. There's no doubt about that. So we're being held back by the white man and his coons. East Indians, Asians, anybody from a country outside of this one. They can do what they want to do. Mobsters. Italian mobsters. They go to, from country to country mobbing. 
I admit, no matter what they do, they certainly know how to generate that money. No matter where they go. But they all got the ideas from the small hats, though. On the bigger scale. Um, we're the only ones held back. And when you think about this, because I was thinking about this a few nights ago. Then I realized, you know what? The red, black, and green people, Pan-Africans, whatever you want to call them. I call them coons. I noticed... See, they, I told you this before. They help retard us by always talking about the same shit. Number one, it's always in the past. I know it was Martin Luther King Day the other day. It's bigger than that. It's always in the past. I'm, I'm going to get to that in a minute, what I'm about to think about. It's always the same old people. Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King. Then they try to bring up Nat Turner. And that was only because of that fucking movie. Don't be fooled. Harriet Tugman. All this shit. The same old shit. I keep telling you the white man, the small hat, has crafted our history and has told us who the fuck we need to be worried about. They run and pimp Farrakhan too. All of these people are on the fucking tape. Farrakhan's a Caribbean. That's why you got to worry about your people. I didn't say hate, even though they're hating on us. I mean, you got to think about it. They put imposters in our place. They don't do this for other people. East Indians can come here and be as black as hell. There's no problem. They can move into a white neighborhood. The white man looks the other way. Asian. The white man looks the other way. Anybody. African. The white man looks the other way. Caribbean. As long as they got the accent. Or some type of identifying paraphernalia on them. Just in case they can't tell. They look the other way. But as soon as it's one of us, there's a problem. Where I'm at. Yeah, I took a black seed oil pill. Fucking what? Three, four hours ago. I'm still uh, tasting it. Hey, damn. Throw all this time. Speaking of that, I went to McDonald's, man. This Mexican girl, man. She had a she had an ass on her. I mean, that was a powerful one. I said, damn, I ain't trying to mess with no Mexicans, but God damn, that one is the kind that'll make you change. You know there's always going to be one that's going to make you change your mind. Her hairline went back a little further than I, I like, but that ass uh, went back for, for kind of far too. So <laughs> that was a powerful one. Black woman's ass. Not that uh, fairly flat uh, shit. That's how you know they got black in them because no fucking straight up Mongol is going to have an ass like that. And a lot of these other ones that you see out here. Mongols got flat asses and skinny bodies. Any, anyhow, where I'm at. A lot of white people. But I noticed the East Indians. Every time they would see me. Well, because I would see them. That's the only time <laughs> I knew that they were around. East Indians or the Mongol Asians. They move out after a while. Now, I know a lot of people, they come and go here, but they move out. White people stay, but the Asians leave because of stereotypes. They don't want to live next to us, but they can live next to the white man. If they chose, and they got the money to do it, if they chose to say, you know what? I want to move to Wyoming. They can move in a Ku Klux Klan area or... Nothing where there's not, no, no other type of people but white people <laughs> throughout the entire state. They won't have a problem. If one of us moved to Wyoming, and I'm using that as an example, we'll get the third degree. What brings you here? 
What do you do for a living? What kind of business are you into? And if you don't have a white wife, <laughs> they're really going to be like, man, what's up with these people? Well, nah, we can't have this. It's just like when you go on those storefront sites and all that kind of stuff. That's how you know the shit is a bunch of bullshit. They always claim that the small hat is the primary enemy. But yet, most of the talks, most of the put downs is concerning the black man. And like I said, mixed groups like Hispanics, Italians and others try to get down with this whiteness. Oh, I'm white. You're mixed. Some of you might be white enough to be white, but most of them is just claiming it just to try to get some benefits. Keep telling people when the Portuguese and the Spaniards went on their voyages, they were already fucking mixed. You can see that in the paintings. People are darker than I am. I mean, come on. So again, we are the indigenous Americans. I don't like using the word Indian. Some people do because obviously that was not what we were called. And that was a misnomer by the so-called European. Because they were the ones that were dumb. They had to learn how to moor in order to uh, sail the world. They say black people didn't know how to sail, but how come it's called mooring? They learn all that shit from the Moors, but I don't want to get deep into that. And like I always say, I always correlate it with this. South Africa, Australia, just as small examples. They treat us all the same, the indigenous. The people whose land it was, or you can still say is. They take everything. They don't allow us to participate into society. But anybody can come from any other country in the world and make it happen. Whether it's in Australia, UK, South Africa, what have you. That's by design. Because the psychological warfare, economic, economic warfare, and of course physical. You look at the Australian Aborigines, it's a similar situation. South African uh, uh, Africans, it's a similar situation. Mixed people in South Africa were in a different class. Because they're mixed with white, Germanic, because it's a Dutch, Anglo, Germanic confederation. They don't call it that, but God damn it, that's what it is. So that's why I call it that. Because if you say, I'm tired, because I remember listening to a call-in show on C-SPAN. It was a South African guy, some white guy called, and he was like, I'm tired of you British always going around causing problems. Then the guy said, I don't have one drop of British blood in me. He was Dutch. But Dutch, Anglo, they're both Germanic tribesmen. That's why they work together. In their root language, they're the fucking same. They know who they are. You don't know who they are. They took over Europe. And they started white power. South Africa, the colored, they're able, see, psychological. These are little psychological things that are done when you're a little kid. This is why I don't understand why grown people don't understand the tricks. When you're a little kid, if you get more of something than other kids, other people start thinking, well, this person must be special or better than us or have something that we don't have aside from what you're getting. Then after a while, 
whether they want it to or not, the person who's getting more starts thinking that they're better. Shit, it's like this girl at this McDonald's with this big ass. Mexican. She got something a whole lot of them don't have. <laughs> so, you know, she's getting a lot of attention. That's why. So she, after a while, she's going to start feeling, oh, I got something they don't have. I got, I'm better. You know, I don't know how they deal with big asses in the Mexican world, but, you know, in our world, you know how that goes. <laughs> and speaking of that, I was in a Trader Joe's today. I seen these white women wearing tight jeans and they got some flat asses on them. I said, I said man, I don't know who the fuck could be into this. But there was one kind of athletic. She had a fat, flat, uh, fat ass. I was looking at that. And then this black lady, she looked like she was some Caribbean or something. Looking at me, she says something. I couldn't make it out. But she was looking at me, looking at that white lady's ass. Almost as that you know how a lot of these Caribbeans act like they come here, they tell you what the hell you could be thinking. You should be thinking and what you should be doing. I mean, the nerve of people, man. You, you come to another country, you want to tell other people what the hell they should be thinking. I, I should tell you what you should have been thinking. You should have, you should have been thinking, let me stay in my country and build the shit up. I mean, that's what you do. You come from a home where your parents are at and then you uh, are on your own because you wanted your own. Even if the, the your first place was a piece of shit, you build it up and take care of it because you're like, okay, it's mine. They don't do that. Jamaica... Is a piece of shit. Haiti <laughs> shouldn't be, but it's a piece of shit. I showed you when I did went through the Dominican Republic. That's a piece of shit, but it's a cleaner piece of shit than the Dominican Republic than uh, Haiti. Yeah, Haiti's been having a lot of problems, and then you know there was another attempt on the current president, which I'm I'm surprised that didn't make as much news. Uh, so something's going on there. Maybe he's doing too good a job or something. <laughs> I don't know. But usually that's what happens when you do too good a, good of a job in in third world. They take you out, and coons always assist. But you know these people have some nerve. You, you know you come here, and that, this all ties into the main topic. This Pan African R R B G shit. Because I was listening to a show. And we're putting down Martin Luther King. Now I know some people might say, well, you did that too. But my video, which I put on uh, Facebook, because I thought it was on YouTube, because I was just going to point to it in the community section, but... I said, damn, the shit ain't even up. I think that was one of the videos that those coons uh, got upset about. <laughs> because they said, how dare this man and that fucker. So he got a gun pointed at Martin Luther King's head. You know how Negroes do. See, it's Negroes like that guy. I don't even want to say the guy's name, but you heard me say it that time when he tried to get on. See, Nick Negroes like him. See, me, like I said before, Meatball's not banned from my channel. But those two, that Big J and that other dude. Total jackasses. They can't defeat what you say. So they try to bring you down. And that Big J, I could have brought his shit down. That other guy keep trying to build something up. But nobody wants to hear his drunk ass. And no, I'm not talking about that guy. I'm talking about the guy who took my channel down. So just in case people think I'm talking about them. I'm not talking about you. And I'm not saying his name because a lot of you guys, even those guys, are not familiar with the guy. So I don't even want you to be familiar with the guy because the guy is a no good individual. The guy will stab you in the back. Give him time. So it's better you don't even know that guy. But Big J, you heard the name. He's a fucking dimwit. 
bus. People like that. Those are the reasons why we can't go anywhere. Plus this RBG shit. They're like a uh, fucking imperial guard for the white man. They guard the white man's stories. The white man's fairy tales. They're the ones who are the guardians of white supremacy. But when they try to pull tricks on you, they got to say buzz phrases to make you think that they're against the white man. But when you really listen to them, you can tell that they're 100% for the white man or agents of the white man. Money will make anybody do anything. I, I guarantee it. I said it before. I guarantee you. If you walk up to a random stranger, a, a son and his mother, or even a daughter and her mother, and you tell, pull the daughter to the side, you say, listen, I got a thousand dollars in my hand. You slap the shit out of your mother right now. This thousand dollars is yours. I guarantee you about 10% of the people might be thinking about it, but they're going to be like, nah, I ain't going to do that. And that's just assuming that they're not people who get high. Now, people who get high, <laughs> you already know the, the percentages, but just, just, just assume that they're not people who get high. So, if you keep upping the price, like Meyer Lansky says, everybody has a price. Speaking of that price, it seems like Microsoft is trying to buy Activision for $95 billion. I say, damn, that's a whole, whole hell of a lot of money that'll make them say, fuck it, you got it. <laughs> Shit. I mean, they really, they really only make Call of Duty and... Some other game. They used to make some nice Spider-Man games. But I think Sony took over that. I don't know if the deal went through. But I'm sure that you know they'll take it. Apparently Microsoft has a whole lot of money to waste. But. You go from that thousand dollars. You say you know what I got three thousand. I ain't slapping my own mother. I ain't doing it, buddy. Okay, well, well, 5000 make you do it. See, the more, higher the price goes, the more you start thinking about it. And you might start thinking things like, well, maybe if I slap her soft and grab the money, then I'll explain to her after I did it, hey, I, I, here's some money for you. And I can guarantee you, if you did that, She'll probably say, well, shit. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you give me half of it, fuck it. But if the guy says, you got to slap the shit out of her. With all your might. And let's assume your mother is 45 years old and can take it. <laughs> Not 70 or something like that. And they up the price to 10 G's. Cash money right now. More and more people will start considering it because the higher the price goes, the more you start thinking about what you can do with that money. You start thinking about cars, clothes, a down payment on a house, uh, food, cell phones. Coach bags. <laughs> and of course, if you get high, you're going to be thinking about all the drugs you can buy. 10 G's might gain 10%. And some people might even start convincing themselves, you know what? My mother hasn't been the nicest to me. 
But I'll get this 10 G's. But damn, she might call the cops. But, nah, 10 G's, nah, I, that's too much. That's too much to take the risk and, and to make my mother uh, hate me. Then the man says, 20 G's. Show him the money. <laughs> I guarantee you, if one of these TV shows were to do that, I guarantee you, somebody's going to slap the shit out of their mother at some point in time. Just like, uh, you know, those other, those dare, truth to dare, or whatever the hell that show that used to come on back in the day. Uh, I forgot the name of that show. Where you eat crazy shit. <laughs> the higher the price can, uh, goes, if you want this money, eat this. And some people would do it. A lot of people would be like, nah. Then once the price started going higher, they do it. It'll happen. And I say all that to say this. You got coon agents out here. Some people's price is high. The coon. Some people's price is very low. It's like accepting a job. If you need a job. Some of you are going to be. Gonna be thinking to yourselves, you know what, man? I can't survive without at least twenty-five dollars an hour. Some people might say I can't survive without at least sixteen dollars an hour. Some people are like shit. I gotta take this minimum wage, even though I don't want to, but I got to. And people will take whatever is offered first. That is what happens when people are coon agents. It's not always the high prices that'll do it to them. It's lower wages. You got to keep putting in the work. Then you get higher and higher and higher. So these red, black, and green people. You see them all over fucking YouTube. The same shit over and over again. They get mad when you don't accept their ways. Their stories that are presented to them by the white man. Where do they get the idea that we came from Africa from? It came from the white man. And only the white man. Every time you have a discussion with them. They make excuses for the white man and his stories. They don't think, they, it seems like they can't think for themselves. I guess it's because they're coon agents. That's what it is. So they argue with us, make up lies uh, for the white man. You heard my discussions with a lot of these people. Why are you making up lies for the white man? Making up lies that he's not making up for himself. Because you're a coon agent of white supremacy. That's what I'm calling it out. I'm, that's, what, that's what it is now. You're a coon agent of white supremacy. And you still got Negroes out here going overboard saying North Africa was always white. I'm going to hold you bastards to it. If North Africa was always white, then you can't exclude ancient Egypt. I don't care how black they look. I don't care about no fucking Afro. I don't care about nothing. You want to call the rest of North Africa white and say it was always white, then Egypt is going with it. Nubia is going with it. That's what I said. So you can't have it both ways. We got to ask ourselves, why are these Negroes saying that North Africa was always white? But yet, Egypt is the exception to the rule. So if that's the case, are the Egypt, were the Egyptians 
invaders to the white man's Africa. Is that what it was? See? This, 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 this is all you got to do is ask these people a few key questions to shut their whole shit down. You can't have it both ways. Now, if you don't know about Northwest Africa from Libya to Morocco, and I ain't talking about that Morris Science Temple bullshit, because that's absolute bullshit. <laughs> and I'll throw down with anybody who thinks they about something from the Morris Science Temple. Anybody. Pretty soon, I'm going to throw down with that Taharka Bay because my man's been bullshitting. I'm about to throw up a video pretty soon because my man's been bullshitting. Because he took a video down. But see, I was smart enough to swipe that shit with the quickness. Even though I, I admit, I swiped it once I saw that it was down. And then it came back up. And then I was able to get it. Then he took it down. So luckily, I was able to get that shit. Or else I can't prove what I'm talking about. And not in regards to this video, but in regards to some other shit. Because my man's bullshitting. Now, for people who know what I'm talking about, my man was bullshitting on that link. Bullshitting. Now, give me that shit. Bullshitting on his email address. Bullshitting on the link. And give me the fucking link at fucking midnight. Like I'm about to engage in some conversation that ain't even on the topic I'm trying to engage in at fucking midnight. I gotta be crazy. So my man full of shit. Then he gonna have those females on there. One of them called uh, Shake Ass, which is a fucking title that doesn't exist. And no woman can be no shake. Even though she was cute though. <laughs> and she had on a turban like men wear, which of course doesn't take place in Islam. Moorish uh, science temple people are not Muslims, despite the fact that they keep shouting out Islam. It's more more fantasy shit. More fantasy shit. Yeah, more fantasy shit. But that's not what this is about right now. It's about coon agents and what they're doing, new strategies that they're employing. Let's listen to one show. They were talking about Martin Luther King. Calling him an agent and an agent of white supremacy, which I said years ago. And people got mad. But I laid it out. But see, when I laid it out, I laid out in an unbiased structure. Other people, they laid out, they laid out with extreme bias. Because I like telling both sides of the story. Just like when I show you North Africa, I like to show you the indigenous black, the mixed, and whatever whites are there and tell you how they got there and show you the characteristics about them that proves where the fuck they came from and where they're not from. See, these coons, they'll just show you some white North Africans and say, oh, see, North Africa was always white because they know most people can't separate the present from the past. They know that most people look at the United States and think it was always white. And I ain't talking about the United States as a country. I'm talking about this landmass. They think it was always white. And then when it comes to the Native Americans, you only have in your mind what was presented to you by the white man. Just like the white man, you only have in your mind what was presented to you about other people. Ancient Europeans. Matter of fact, the white man, if you notice, he never presents any depiction of Europeans before Greece and Rome. Have you noticed that? He'll tell you about Druids. He'll tell you about some Celts. But he won't show you none. Will he? See, you got to use your brain. 
I told you I grew up in a household full of liars. That's why I'm able to decipher the bullshit. Because I had three people telling three different styles of lies. And after I kept deciphering their lies and throwing it back on them, they would get pissed off. Just like you see these people, when I had these discussions with these people, they get pissed off. <laughs> because I, I decipher their bullshit. It's the same routine. That's why I'm calm. I know I ain't calm now, but you know what I mean. That's why I'm calm when I'm dealing with these people because I know that they're full of shit and I know they can't do nothing about it but to keep on lying. Just like these people I grew up with. And they're still liars to this day. <laughs> keep on lying. They act like just because I was the youngest, my memory is faulty on some things. Motherfucker, I remember everything. I can remember even before I was in fucking first grade. I can remember my kindergarten years. Now, I can't tell you the years, but, but I can figure it out based on <laughs> the time period. I can remember certain events like I'm sure all of us can. During kindergarten, with extreme clarity. The only thing that might slip away are things that I'm not, I wasn't really concerned about, such as fashion. Stuff like that. Fashion. And for the most part, cars and stuff like that. But everything else, I remember when I first saw a comic book. This might be hard for some people to believe. And I can't tell you what age I was at, but I know I wasn't in school because I was getting dropped off at babysitters. And so this is before kindergarten. The first comic book I ever saw was an Incredible Hulk. It was on a fucking, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not a desk. Uh, hey, what do you, how do you call that shit? Dresser. No, it wasn't one of those tall ones. That's why I was able to see it. I remember this explicitly. I was dropped off at a babysitter in the projects. I was taken to a back room because you know how it is when people babysit. The main thing that babysitters always want to do is put the kids to sleep so they don't have to be bothered with them. <laughs> That's the main thing they want to do. So I got taken in the back room. I don't remember the entrance of the place, but I remember from the kitchen to the back room, to the double, to the bunk beds. I remember it clearly. I remember the place wasn't the cleanest. There was a baby that was younger than me. He was a baby, like probably about a year old, two at best. Black, black baby boy. Now, I don't, and I, I admit, I don't know who the hell the babysitter was. I don't remember that. <laughs> but <clears throat> I know it was a female. And the boy was on the top. She, first thing she did, she's like, here, you, you sleep on the bottom. And I was thinking to myself, because I can still remember. I said, you know what? Why is this lady trying to make me go to sleep? I'm not tired. <laughs> That's what I was thinking about. <laughs> but, you know, when you're a little kid, you just say, fuck it. That's what they say, do. I'm like, man, I ain't tired. Then she, I waited for her to close the door. Hate to say, but I guess I was, you know how it is, getting sneaky as a little kid, I guess. I knew she didn't want, I just felt that she didn't want to be bothered again. You know, she just wanted to do whatever the fuck she was doing and get paid. So, I'm looking around. I don't know if I was looking around to try to steal, but I was just looking around. So then I came across that comic book, so I, I kept looking at it. I was like, man, who... What the fuck is this? Now, this might shock people too. I don't think, I always knew how to read from a very young age. I knew it was the Incredible Hulk because I read that. Now, I didn't know how to read every fucking word. And I know you thinking, how can somebody who's not in kindergarten know how to read the word incredible? <laughs> but trust me, I, I knew, I knew that shit. 
trust me, I, that's the one thing I could always do is fucking read. I skimmed through the comic book, so I'm thinking about it now. I didn't read the comic book. But that's when I got impressed by comic books. And after that, I just wanted to see some more. But I didn't know where the hell you got comic books from. You know? Uh, so, then the next thing I did, hell, the, I don't know if he's still alive. I don't even know who the kid was. But if you listen, <laughs> well, he probably won't remember this incident. But for some odd reason, I don't know why. But I figured I'd climb up the ladder because he had his hand sticking out. I don't know why I bit his hand. Then he started crying. <laughs> <laughs> then I went right back on the bottom bunk and I was pretending I was uh, asleep and then the girl came in and she was like oh what's wrong I, I don't know why I bit his hand I don't know I invited to draw blood or nothing like that I was just <laughs> doing it to be funny I don't know why but um so I got a good memory but this is what liars do they try to alter your memory with lies thinking okay the further back in time it was i can change a little here change a little there and make this person think what i want them to think but see with hard-headed people like me you can't change a little here or there because i'm gonna keep holding you to what the fuck it was and they hate people like me but that's fine because i hate people like you fucking liars that's what these coons do for their white masters want to change a little here change a little there and try to convince you that this is what it was so now all of a sudden they're telling you that Martin Luther King was a coon agent which he was but they're not telling you who he was a coon agent for they don't go that far but I do I tell you he was a coon agent for the NAACP. Matter of fact, I think this person actually did say NAACP and small it's a small hat run thing, but they didn't go too far into that. Like the, if they are forced to admit that part, they never want to get deeper because you notice that they all have to defend the small hat's honor and say, oh man, in in the the so-called holla, holla thing. And I'm saying that on purpose because there was a video. Somebody, I forgot the person. They put me up on it. They told me because I had to pin. I, I had to copy and pin their comment on the video. Damn, I forgot the name of the video with the red, black, and green or flag on it. I forgot the video, but he made a comment and said, you know what? Go to... 56 minutes. They censored. They censored your word. I said censor my word. I said what? But see his comment. They censored his comment. His comment didn't make the cut. That's why I had to copy it. And pin the comment. So it'll stick. So people. That's the only way you could do it. And, some, and a lot of times. They don't even allow you to see the entire. Comment. That's why I can't stand these, this fucking channel. It's heavy duty censorship. So. I had to copy and paste it. Then I went to uh, the 56 minute mark in the video. And then. Sure enough. They censored my word. When I used the word. When I was going showing the videos about Asia and all that kind of stuff, and went into Thailand showing the street foods, <clears throat> and I said Thailand is known for having a lot of. Let's see if they censor this. T R A N N I E S. <laughs> said no, no, they probably censor that too. But I said the word out, outright. And I played the shit back. I said, God damn, they fucking censored it. Cut into the word. I said, motherfucker, this is the new style of censoring now, huh? I mean, what the fuck do they want on here? 
Damn, they're censoring every fucking thing. Shit you can't put up, but some other people can put up. Shit you can't say, but other people can say. And get paid. I said, damn. I thank my man for the heads up, or woman. I was shocked. I, I, I didn't think YouTube was going that goddamn far. Censoring shit. As you spit, spit censoring your words, you don't do it, but they do it. It's fucked up. Who, who knows what the fuck else they censored? I'm telling you, man. I mean, this. If you don't see what the fuck is going on in this country right now, I guess you're just going to be willing to accept everything. You got these coon agents there out here getting paid. In all likelihood, it's petty cash because it's a fucking job for these people. And you know how you can tell? Because they're at it every fucking day. That's how you can tell. They're up early in the fucking morning. Getting on YouTube, making a fucking video. And you see some of these people complain about me making videos whenever I do. I'm not getting paid. But these people are. So anyway. They don't go deep with the small hat shit. Just like Tariq Nashi, they always got to praise the small hats. Oh, they fought uh, the Nazis and all that kind of shit. And uh, the Nazis, you know, all it took was one for the, the, to start the fight. If those people believe that story, that's how you can tell that bullshit agents. Because when you examine that story, I told it. Well, I might have to put that motherfucking video up. I have to go on uh, Facebook because I know those coons. Because those coons, one day they tried to think that they were going to back me into a corner trying to get me to tell everything that I thought was fantastic about that World War II event. You know what I'm talking about, the one with the H. And I ain't talking about no hydrogen bomb either. They try to think that they were smart. See, these people aren't smarter than, matter of fact, they're not even as smart as me. They're fucking dumb. Older than me and a whole lot dumber. That guy didn't realize I was saying what I wanted to say and what I wanted to get across. That's why I don't say nothing that I don't want out there. So, if it comes out of my mouth, it's because I want it out of my mouth. You can't trick me into saying the wrong thing because I know the coon agents are out here looking to do that. Like, when coon, the same coon agent, he didn't try to trick me, he tried to trick somebody else. I would say his name. But then that'll lead too far to too many people. But when the person was talking about, we got to get into this black power stuff. We got to start doing this net. And the guy was like, well, what are we, how, how are we supposed to be doing this? Then he said, we got to do this, that, and the other. Then he kept saying, well, I mean, what are you going to do? How are you going to do it? Cop questions. Because he was trying to get the guy to say on the air, let's start the killing. That's what he was trying to get him to say. I'm glad the guy almost fell for it. But see, this is how you can pick up on these coon agents because they're not smart. They think that they're smart because they're backed by the white man. They think, oh man, the white man chose me. So I must be special. He chose you because you're a fucking idiot. And you're dumb enough to sell your own people out. That's why he chose you. And you use drugs. That's a weakness. Once they know that you're high and gotta get like to get high, they know they got you. Because you gotta get your drugs from someplace. And drugs cost money, just like alcohol. Oh, shit, I think alcohol might cost more than fucking weed and shit. And a lot of other drugs. That's why a lot of these East Indians keep owning these liquor stores. 
Went to a place to play a lottery, a fucking uh, Yemeni guy on the fucking place. Motherfucker can hardly speak two words of fucking English and owns a fucking variety store. I still don't know how to fuck places like those make any fucking money to stay in business. Selling little cakes. Uh, I guess the deli might be the main money maker. Lottery tickets. Newspapers. A whole bunch of other bullshit. Overpriced bullshit, of course. Like, how do... If they pay rent... I mean, how do they generate enough money? That's what I always wondered. How do these places generate enough money to pay the fucking rent? And the bills? I mean, how many motherfucking... Subs can you sell? <laughs> I mean, it ain't even a sub place. I never buy nothing else from places like these except for the lottery tickets. I know they get paid from each lottery ticket sold, but I forgot what it was. I think it was like 10% of the face value on the lottery ticket. And then you if you get a piece of the winnings, even if it's you only win $10 or something like that, five bucks, you know, they still get a piece of that too. But that still ain't, can't be enough to pay the rent unless somebody has big. That's why you see when people hit the lottery, they interview the store owner and they're always happy because they know they get a cut. But if you notice, the store owner is always a fucking Indian or some fucking so-called Arab. Ain't it funny how the fucking Arabs are lighter than the fucking in Indians and shit? This fucking Yemeni guy looked like a fucking Puerto Rican or Dominican. Lighter, lighter complected. And if he didn't open his mouth, you'd have no idea where the fuck he was, he was from. You'd think he was fucking Hispanic. Motherfuckers come over here from any kind of country and set up shop in a business. We're here. We can't set up shit. Where did these people get the fucking money from? Where did they get the business acumen from? When you can't even speak the motherfucking language. They get the hookup from the white man. And what do we get? We get these fucking niggers. That's what I said. Because I'm tired of them. These fucking Caribbeans. With this Pan-African bullshit. That's the fucking thing that's holding us back. And like I was saying at the beginning. Every fucking time. If you notice these people talk about this. Same old shit. Rosa Parks. Martin Luther King. Malcolm X. Marcus Garvey. No matter how many times people have proven Marcus Garvey was a fucking coon agent. They stick to the same story. Why don't you change the story? If the man has been proven to be a con man. I, I, ain't, I ain't afraid to admit I got the ball rolling on Marcus Garvey because I was first to see all this Caribbean deceptive bullshit. But others went in with more detail and more viewers, which is a good thing. But even with the more, more viewers and the more convincing presentation. These RBG people stick to the script. They refuse to call Marcus Garvey what the fuck he was. Which is a Freemason, Caribbean, coon. That's what the fuck he was. Goddamn coon. Now, I know they're going to get pissed off. But get pissed off. But ask yourself, are we lying? <clears throat> Glad I bought this water. I realize this Trader Joe's alkaline water tastes better than a, a lot of other brands. <laughs> but, um, are we lying about Marcus Garvey? No. That's why that UBTV, I like what he put together. I'm glad he got the good viewership on that. Because more people need to see all that kind of shit. The more you see it, and the more you start thinking and realizing what's going on, 
the more you can stop being fooled by these Negroes. I declared it. All red, black, and green people are coon agents. All of them. The whole concept. And it goes to the British. So these people were talking about Martin Luther King, which is fine, but then they try to defend Marcus Garvey. They said King was the coon. Marcus Garvey was the truth. You can easily prove that Marcus Garvey was the coon and King was the truth. Or more of the truth than Marcus Garvey was. But whatever the case is, they keep hitting us with the same routine. A majestic leader that can uplift the masses. All while they funnel in imposter Negroes. Like Kamala Harris, Obama, Colin Powell, Sheila Jackson Lee, and a host of others to perpetrate as us or to at least make other people think that they are us. They're placed into their positions and I'm sure it's backed by the British because I keep telling people the British have invested the most money into the United States. They're the biggest foreign investor. Why? Now, I didn't check how much the U.S. has invested in the U.K. Maybe by the time I get home and put this up, maybe I will, will have uh, checked that out. In the UK, they hate the United States because obviously the United States became more powerful. But using, but see, the, like I say, the commonalities are the small hats run the UK and Europe and Russia like they run the United States. So they're ultimately in control. And they want to unite everything. That's why when you watch these Amazon commercials, why they got to have British accents? You see that one with the Greek and Medusa. And you see how they keep trying to show closer truths in some of these commercials by showing mulatto Greeks because that's what the fuck they were. And your white power people on the uh, storm front, they get mad at shit like this. But why do you get mad at the truth? The truth is the truth. I mean, how can you get mad at it? Because you're feeling inadequate because, okay, well, we beat the black man down and told him they were about nothing, but, and we try to hide everything from him and everybody else, but yet they're smart enough to peel back the layers of the lies. You keep seeing all this British shit. I keep trying to tell people about that British shit. All these fucking commercials. Got a British accent. It's to prepare you for the merger. So I keep telling people the United States, even though it broke away from the UK, it still patterned itself after the UK. That's why it's called the United States, United Kingdom. United States and the United Kingdom, even though it's called the United Kingdom, it got formed just like the United States got formed, conquering and forcing people into the, to the kingdom. And just like the United States, like I've always been telling people, the United Kingdom is stolen land. The people who run this shit, they're not even from the place. Just like the United States. Red, black, uh, red, white, and blue flag for the United Kingdom. Red, white, and blue flag for the United States. And if you remember a video I had a long time ago showing you that the Jamaican flag looks like the Union Jack of the UK. <laughs> which also comes from the Confederate flag as well. The Confederate flag was designed after that. Because you, uh, you got to look at the pieces of the, the Union Jack and see how that was formed. And then you could see why the Confederate flag was the way it was. 
And the same thing with a lot of the southern states flags. <clears throat> so even though people broke away, they didn't forget where they came from. They just wanted their own thing. Then, of course, get into some other shit with the original 13 colonies. <laughs> Wonder why it wasn't 12 colonies or 14 colonies, but it had to be 13. I guarantee you, if you look deep enough, <laughs> you might find that the 13th was made up so that they have 13. <laughs> but um yeah, you got these coon agents out here some of them are even trying to matter of fact it's not some they've been doing this trying to tell black people convince you that JFK wasn't about shit and he hated black people then you asked him to present the evidence because he tried to say JFK was discriminating against black people and called us niggas I said where's the motherfucking evidence Show it. They don't show it. Martin Luther King. They say he was messing with white women. That's what Republicans always said. See, these Negroes, these RBG types, they're fucking black coon conservatives. They tell you, don't vote Democrat, vote Republican. They, they sound like Rush Limbaugh. Listen to these people. Because they're reading from the same script. What they're doing is the Republicans and these so-called conservatives, they're putting a few dollars in these hood type guys hands because, you know, they want the money and need the money. And they have them spew prop their propaganda. They don't give a fuck what it is. Just pay me. I keep telling people, JFK, you, you think the man got shot down? Because he hated black people? If he hated black people, they would have had him serve two terms. I mean, come on. Do you have to be that smart to figure this shit out? He did a lot for black people. They ain't the primary reason they shot his ass down, but that's one of them. Try to tell you he didn't care about black people. Eisenhower. He seemed like an honorable man, but I can't think of anything he did for black people. I can't even recall him. Anything that he did where he even mentioned us. It was like, he was like not even worried about us. Lyndon Johnson, a co-conspirator in the JFK assassination. Richard Nixon, a co-conspirator in the JFK assassination. They called us niggers. That's on record. Now, they say Martin Luther King was fucking white prostitutes. Why would you repeat that? Huh? They said this, what, years and years ago. They got the tapes. Well, how come they don't present the tapes? Martin Luther King is long dead. J. Edgar Hoover is long dead. So it's not going to do too much to Martin Luther King's legacy if you show the goddamn tapes. At least he wasn't fucking male prostitutes. Then they try to say, well, Martin Luther King was uh, in bed with uh, homosexual uh, people. And they know it's Baird Rustin. It's well known. They try to say he was, they were directing him. Yeah, but who, who was he working for? The small hats. Everything goes back to the small hats. Because money makes people hop to it. That's why I started off with the scenario about people upping the price to slap the shit out of your old mother. Because money will make you do whatever. And if you're on drugs, my God. Go on Pornhub, if you will. <laughs> and watch the genre of porn which I think I don't like porn I watch it but I don't like it I know some people that might not make any sense I don't like it it's disgusting and low down and if it were not made I would not miss it 
All it does is degrade people and it's owned by the small hats. But you go in there, there's a sub-genre of porn where these guys go around filming filthy, disgusting, decrepit crack hookers. Even some meth hookers and heroin hookers. Just so they can get fucking views and because maybe they don't get any pussy. They hit these things raw. They don't even know their fucking names. They don't know nothing about them. Even if they ask them, hey, you clean? What do you expect a fucking drug addict to say when you're trying to pay them? You think they're going to say, nah, I ain't clean. They want that motherfucking money so they can go get high. And then one guy, this black kid, he likes coming in them. And acting like he's doing something. And he only lasts literally one minute. Matter of fact, a lot of these guys, I don't know if that's a fucking joke or maybe that's why they got to get hookers. <laughs> but that shit is strange. I mean, you, you jerk it off should take longer than that. But that's a sub, sub and white guys doing it too. I did see one guy, white guy, he had a small penis. I said, maybe that's why you got to get a hooker. Hitting that raw. Now that white hooker, she did have a sexy body. And she weren't a filthy drug addict and a hooker. She yeah, she was she would have been looking pretty good. These guys don't understand. These fucking hookers, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about themselves. <laughs> I mean fuck. So, people will do anything for money. That's my point. And we know we've had coon agents since forever. Malcolm X had coon agents. Elijah Muhammad was one of them. Farrakhan is one now. And I challenge any nation of Islam high command on anything. Or anybody who thinks that they that's who they are. Because that's what I like to do. But we know they all lie anyway. But. When these Negroes are saying that JFK didn't do anything for black people. This is where I, I, I cross the line. And, and this is what they like to say too when I object to this type of shit. They try to say, oh, he wants the cape for the white man. They try to bring up the race. Oh, well, you shouldn't like JFK because he's a cracker. Well, why are you talking about Republicans and uh, conservatives then? What are you defending their ideologies for? They hate JFK. No Negro alive should have a problem with JFK. None. Why do you think when you watch the footage from when JFK got killed and they interview black people, only the Uncle Tom with the Uncle Tom accent can you hear them say anything bad about the guy. But you mostly hear white people. More or less. I don't want to say happy, but. They can give a, they can give two shits about it. And that's right after it happened. Because in order to kill the guy, they had to scheme and put all the propaganda out to make all different types of people hate the guy and on the other show I was on that's what the host used to do he used to hate on JFK and lie to the audience and say that he didn't do shit for you they praised Lyndon Johnson Lyndon Johnson is on tape calling Martin Luther King a nigger they say JFK did it where is the fucking tape don't talk about it. Show it. Martin Luther King was fucking white women. Where is the fucking tape? There's no reason why it should not be made available. I would like to hear it all. Now, do I believe that he cheated on his wife? I believe it. Shit, they had a lot of kids, so obviously Martin Luther King liked doing his thing. 
And usually, like Tariq Nasheed, you keep your wife pregnant, which keeps her occupied so you can go out and do what you got to do. That's what they do. The foolish wives usually think, oh, this is a nice family man. No, he's just keeping your ass occupied for nine months so you can't do nothing. <laughs> then, then they could be away from you and do what they got to do. Or want to do. Because they don't have to do it. But show the tapes. You, you know I'm not lying. These people, every RBG person on YouTube or elsewhere. Now, now again, there were a few who were true to it. But those are the ones who got tricked. But on YouTube, you see it now. They're all talking about fuck the Democrats. Start voting Republican. They're trying to prepare you now for the next go around. That's what they're trying to do. They figure, fuck it, let's get started earlier. Tariq Nashi did it. Pan-Africanism strikes back. All of these fuckers. You see, he got him a nice new set, TV show uh, style now. Because he's getting paid, that's why. Coon agents. They want you, you vote Republican, what do you get out of it? I, I don't really, I told you, your votes don't count any fucking way. But this is what they want you to do, is support them. What do you get out of it? You got one good cop, one bad cop. One cop wants to keep you dependent upon the system. And the other cop doesn't want you to participate in the system. What have they done? Republicans. I, again, I don't give a fuck one way or the other, but what have they done? They've had a lot of black lieutenant governors to a white person. But then that black ass guy that was... <laughs> That was the governor of Louisiana, that East Indian guy. He was the fucking governor. He wasn't no motherfucking lieutenant. And he was a Republican. So again, like I started off, these fucking Asians can do what the fuck they want to do. But we always got to play second fiddle to somebody else. So what the fuck good is a Republican doing for us? What the fuck good is a Democrat doing for us? You see, Kamala Harris is the fucking VP. Come on. And Obama was half white. <laughs> gotta stop this shit. We gotta stay away from voting. It's not power. I told people this years and years ago. Your vote, because I was in the politics and I was a fucking campaign manager. And as I was doing it, I was, you know, I was still believing in the system because I, you know, I graduated with a political science degree. I was still thinking, okay, if you work your way in, maneuver, do what you got to do, then you can change the world. But then I quickly learned that. It's not about your mouth. It's about the money. And who you're connected to. And who puts you out. I keep telling you. These fucking politicians. What they talk about. is, is It's like they're fucking movie actors. They get the script. And the policies presented to them. As they go along. And I am not bullshitting you. A lot of their talking points, they didn't even know that they were supposed to make them <laughs> until they started making the shit up. And yeah, I helped make some of the shit up. So I know. Because I said, you got to target this demographic. But see, I ain't segregated by race. So that's, that's what I didn't do. That's what these other people do. I don't do that. I try to send a message that deals with everybody and puts down the opponent's uh, laziness. That's what I do. But they start making up all the talking points as they go along. This 
female I helped get in the office. Shout out to the main driving point. Fuck that. I'm going to say help. I'm the one who made that shit happen. I wrote the talking points. I wrote the literature. I wrote how she's supposed to be presenting herself. I told her what to do to get these people to win you, uh, the, for, so you can win these people over. And the big shots, the names, were nowhere to be found when it was going down. I gave this person the fucking rides to get to from point A to point B. I crafted the whole shit. Nobody was around but me. But when the victory came, nobody was looking in my direction. It's like, who, who the fuck was I? And they all took the fucking credit. I was pissed off. Nobody mentioned me after the victory. I said, ain't this some shit? They didn't do all this shit. I did all this shit. That's when I realized the people with the money, they got the names. It's like a uh, sports team. If the assistant coaches are the ones making it happen and they win the Super Bowl, the head coach gets all the fucking credit. <laughs> but ask, did she win again? No. Because I wasn't around. I ain't trying to brag, but God damn it, I don't usually get into shit that I don't know what I'm doing. And I, I try to do it in a different way than they did it, which worked. But they just didn't see me. Uh, I mean, they didn't want to see me. So I said, fuck it. And that's when I got the re wake up call in reality. That politicians get used by the rich people. For their political aims and goals. While the politicians, they just want their short term or even long term goals. Which is usually a job. That's all they're really looking for. Job and resume patterns. So all this Republican shit, conservative shit. What do black people have to be conservative about? I asked the coon. I said, how far do you want to go back? They always stop at slavery. You don't want to be that conservative, do you? Motherfucker, if you call yourself a conservative, you better take it all. Just like North Africa. You better take it all. You can't play these games. So, this is what you got to deal with. I hope this bread ain't freezing. God damn. Bought me uh, some half-baked bread. Oh, that shit ain't freezing. <laughs> but, well, I guess if it is, it'll be alright. But, um... <clears throat> Man, I'm just telling you, man. It's something else. I know money talks. Like I said, money talks. But you got to learn to recognize these house niggas. And hold their feet to the fucking fire. Which is what I'm going to start doing. But that's why a lot of them ban me. Because they don't want people like me challenging them. But I'm glad I'm hearing people go to some of these people that banned me and I hear the techniques that they're coming with creeping in the door opening it slowly before they come in and take over the whole place I like that I'm going to close with this now what I was originally trying to do see if we if I was able to do what I was originally trying to do I'm going to have to do something else on my dime now. Like I said, if it's on my dime, it's going to take more time, but I wanted to build an apparatus so that people like the Tariq Nasheeds and these other house niggas that couldn't keep fooling you, they could be eliminated from the whole process, which is what is needed to be done. 
You got to move them out the way. You have to. Or else they're going to keep tricking you and wasting your time. People like Tariq Nashi. You know, wasting time. That was something I used to say all the time that these coons are doing. By bullshitting you. Then he adopted that phrase. He adopts from, he takes from this person, that person, any person. Other people calling the shit out left and right. He's constantly taking everybody's shit. That's why he, they, they, they point out when he has his little discussions with white people that he can't explain himself because he's fucking busy stealing everything. But he's a great bullshit artist, though. But you can only bullshit your way, but for so long. And when you come up with people like me who likes to extract, extract the truth out of you, Then it's kind of rough. God damn, this shit's fogging up in the back. I don't know why in the back. But it is what it is. I finally I ordered a, a air fryer. I'll see how that shit works. Because I get tired of baking those french fries in the fucking oven. And you know oil. I mean, I don't want to spend all that time deep frying this shit. So I'll see how this air fryer shit works. So able to get one for 45 bucks from uh, what Best Buy. Let's see how that works out. If it's even half of what they claim it to be, then it's a good thing. But with that being said, <clears throat> some of the blackest people or blackest acting people on YouTube, they're now black conservatives. They're talking points. Can't believe I drank this whole water. Their talking points are those of the black conservatives like Rush Limbaugh. And you notice even the traditional coon conservatives, the kind with the Uncle Tom accents, see that's why they shifted from those kind because those people are obvious. So now they want to hire the hood sounding types. You know, the kind that say niggas this, motherfuckers that, not me, and all that kind of shit. They hire those kind to further trick you. But they're still coons. Coons for hire. I can't even title the video that because you, you know all the censorship. You know I'd like to. <laughs> but all this conservative talk. It's designed to brainwash you. That's why they keep talking that talk. It's designed to influence people who want to vote to vote Republican. I mean, this again, this is why they talk about the same shit. We can never escape the 1960s. I wasn't born in the 1960s. And I'm sure mostly everybody listening was not either. But yet, Every time these people open their mouths, it's always in reference to something that happened in the 60s. The 60s are over. People got beaten down by the 80s and cracked out. It's a non-stop campaign of tyranny and terrorism against us. Cracked out in the 80s, cracked out in the 90s. High murder rates. Molly's and weed. They have normalized weed. For those who smoke it, you know, you know, I can't tell you what to do. You know, I, I'm not in the habit of telling grown people what they should or should not do. I can only tell you why the shit has become what it has become. The fucking Jamaicans gave you the weed. The ganja. But see, that's not the worst part. The white man, the small hat, and his cool agents have normalized weed. Made it seem like it's cool. If you're not smoking weed, something's wrong with you. They say weed is from the earth. 
That's the excuses that they use. Well, cocaine and heroin, they're from the earth too. Okay. <laughs> I mean, come on. See, cocaine, heroin, all the hard drugs. Nobody wants to admit that they use those. Because those have not been made normalized and made cool. But weed has been. And of course, the users don't realize I'm being tricked into becoming a full-time drug addict. And I'll be willing to bet you those who smoke use something else too. This is how things work. It's brainwashing. So if you know how to look for the signs, you can avoid being brainwashed. But this is what they do. They normalize it, make it cool. And then they got you hooked. This, this, then they got you hooked. This is why they're legalizing it in some states. Because it's fucking experiments going on. They want to see what it does. I guarantee you car accidents probably increased. And a whole bunch of other shit that probably wouldn't be affected by uh, impairment otherwise. But, you know, people will do what it is that they do. They're weak minds and then they're, they're strong minds. So, I can't uh, tell people what to do. It's not my intention. I can only bring out the information and you decide to do with it what you'd like to do with it. But, I know censorship, I'm going to leave with this. The censorship shit, and this wasn't supposed to be this long either, but the censorship is getting on my nerves to the point we may have to go back into the olden times, which is uh, public access, uh, sending shit through the mail, <laughs> uh, email, what do they call that shit, drop... Uh, I think the shit was supposed to be illegal. Mail bombs, email bombs and shit like that. Or so they call it spam now, whatever. All that kind of shit. You might have to go back to that kind of shit. Websites. Matter of fact, speaking of spam, I got a ton of email from Michi X. Talking about she got this on sale, that on sale. This is back on, that's back on. See, it's all about money. That's all it's about. If it was about helping people, they wouldn't be selling you nothing. Tariq Nasheed, every time he opens his mouth, we got the NFTs. We got the buck breaking. Get the book. It's the best selling black uh, book. Whatever the fuck that means. I didn't even know they had no black book chart on Amazon. But everything he comes out with, he, he's always telling you, it's the, oh man, it's the hottest thing out there. It's the best selling. List. If, if it was that best selling, you wouldn't have to tell us to go buy it. <laughs> I mean, shit. If everybody could afford a fucking BMW, you don't have to go tell people to go out and get a BMW. They're going to go get it. So, as with everything, if you stop giving these people the fucking money, even though they st they're still employed by the white man, but if you don't give them the fucking money, They'll shut down. See, I don't get no fucking money, but I'm still here. <laughs> That's how you know I'm real. I'm still here, and I'm going to still keep be here. I'm going to try and find some other ways to do things, too, because I don't like this censorship. Yvette Carnell made a video the other day try to say I don't like censorship and I don't want people knowing my plans so that's why I put it on Patreon so you can pay we know what the fuck Patreon is all about it's about getting paid 
I don't even like the name Patreon. That's why you never see me say go to my Patreon. I don't believe in that shit. I don't know. I mean, some people support it. People's Patreon, some people don't. But <clears throat> that's not what I'm about. But anyway, with that being said, you know, I, I was about to say something about these tablet things in cars now, tablet screens. I guess people don't steal those because screens are so cheap now. Huh? <laughs> Once upon a time, people used to steal people's car stereos and shit. <laughs> but manufacturers, they make the shit so difficult to break out now so anyway who wants a screen anyway ain't about the screen anymore but with that being said yeah I did download matter of fact let me leave you with this I did download a few of those movies we were talking about last time the one I did see was the 1954 movie called Them that was pretty dramatic man especially in the beginning they had that little girl looking stunned <clears throat> she's a pretty good actress for little kids she's still alive you know, I got to look up the cast. And I think she's the only one still alive. Obviously, she was a little kid. She ain't looking too bad either for 70. Was she 74 or something? 76? She's about five years old or some shit back then. It had a dramatic story. Even though the ultimate enemy was kind of cheesy, so to speak. But the way they put it together it was strong. They show dead bodies. I'm like, okay, I had a different perception in 1954 in the movies. That's why it's good to watch a lot of this shit because you get to see stuff that shows you, okay, well, this is what they tell us about the 50s, but if you didn't watch movies aside from some musical and some Humphrey Bogart type shit, you know, you get a different perception. That's why I was showing you those uh, black and white hood movies. That's a totally different perception. <laughs> and in that them, I, I for people who are, who are on Instagram, my Instagram, I showed a scene that had Leonard Nimoy, Le, Leonard Nimoy in it. I think, I don't know if that was his first appearance, but that was his only scene in the movie. So he was apparently a nobody, but he's a small hat too with Mongol features, of course. I said, damn, that's 1954. When, when did Star Trek come out? 1965 or something like that? So my man was at it for a while. So then, it wasn't bad. Then, uh, what's the other one? I started watching this one called Slug. That's a movie I never heard of. It's looking kind of silly. I didn't get to finish it. Then I downloaded one called Grizzly. Another one called Squirm. Grizzly, I swear I never heard of it, but I looked it up. They said it was big like Jaws in comparison. And it tried to emulate Jaws, but I never heard of the movie. They said it, I think it cost under a million dollars to make it. It made about $40 million. So that's a hell of a profit. So I'll probably check that out when I get home. Matter of fact, I think I might try to get that Piranha too. Because I know I saw it long ago, but I forgot all about it. Squirm, I think that was a movie I saw a while ago. But as far as the plot, putting it together, I think the only thing I could recall is people moving into a new house and then worms and all that kind of shit started coming through everywhere. So... I guess I'm getting to that genre of film and then I'll probably check out disaster movies and all that kind of shit. So <laughs> I'm still in my Kung Fu shit too. But with that being said, I'm out. <laughs>